Hi, Dan Barrett, on behalf of Society of St. Vincent de Paul's York South Particular Council Social Justice Advocacy Committee, reaching out for the May 9th Feast of St. Louis de Marillac. St. Louis de Marillac was born out of wedlock to an aristocratic family of Paris. She never knew her mother. She was recognized by her father as his true child, but not as his heir. Upon her father's remarrying, she was sent to the Dominican Sisters Monastery of her aunt to be educated until her father's death, when she was only 12 years old. She was sent to a boarding house to complete her education. There she encountered herbal medicine through one of her co-residents. She aspired to be a nun, but was initially unsuccessful. Some sources indicate she may have been rejected due to her health concerns. At 22, her priest and uncle recommended marriage to the secretary of the Queen Mother, as her family was still well connected to the royal court and aristocracy. She organized a woman's outreach to the poor in her parish with other members of her congregation, providing what aid they could. Later, when her husband fell ill, she cared for him for four long years. In despair in 1623, she had a vision of being a nun administering to the poor and working with the priest she would later identify as St. Vincent de Paul. Acquainted with the plight of the widows, as during her life many families were widowed, whether through childbirth, crime, or through civil unrest. Of her two uncles, that were high-ranking officials in the government, one was publicly executed and another died in jail. With the death of her father, the Lord of Ferris, she was painfully aware of the plight of the orphan and possibility of abandonment. The financial circumstances around her father's death directly impacted her education. After her own husband's death, she worked with the Ladies of Charity to educate the young orphans and provide them with the necessities of life. She eventually encountered St. Vincent de Paul and was invited to the Confraternity of Charities of Paris. There, she learned a great deal in verifying services provided to the poor. Later, she and St. Vincent de Paul founded the Daughters of Charity. Where the Ladies of Charity were noble women, they continued mostly in raising funds. The class divide was too prominent for them to do much more. Meanwhile, the services to the poor was eventually taken over by the Order of the Daughters of Charity. By the grace of God, the order continued to grow and had spread to 40 houses in France at the time of the death of Louise de Marillac. 14,000 served in 90 countries, addressing the needs of food, water, sanitation, and shelter, besides their work with health care, HIV AIDS, migrants, and refugee assistance, and education. Her legacy continues through God's grace, and her remains still have not been corrupted by death. Louise learned to balance service and contemplation. She continues to call us to love the poor. Honor them, my children, she said, as you would honor Christ himself. May her life inspire us to seek to take the circumstances of our life to help those in need. As we perceive through the trials and tribulations of life, let us share our gifts in the glory of God. Thank you for watching this video. And on the 9th of May, please pray for the sick, the widowed, the orphaned, and those that provide the social services that so many depend on, especially during this time of pandemic. God bless.